What's up survivors, Jason here. Today I'm going to continue on what to do when lost in the wilderness part 4. And this time I'm going to be talking about fire. Now when you're dealing with fire, you got to be careful with it. It could hurt others, you, or the environment around you. So pick up some good safety methods of when dealing with fire. Now, when you want to fire, you got to have some type of ignition source. We all know the good old big lighter. This is quick and easy fire. One little tip that I provide with this is get yourself a zip tie, put it underneath the little latch or whatever it is to prevent it from going out. You just tighten it up and then put it right underneath that and it prevents that from getting pressed on. Another thing is matches. I got some striking newer matches. You can just get yourself some paraffin wax and dip it into the melted portion of that and just make these waterproof. Or just get yourself some UCO stream proof matches. Those are excellent little fire shutters. But my favorite has got to be ferro rod. Now, if you want some really good ferro rods, I recommend Nathan's. 4071s. I'll put a link in the description down below to his eBay and his channel so you can go check them out. Now, when you're looking for some type of fire worthy material, you don't just want to do the wood, you need tender. Now, here's a good little illustration of trying to find some tender. When looking for fire tender, you will most likely want to find something fibrous and dry. If you see these cattail, you can see all the fluffiness off of them. This is excellent fire starter. You just really just pick it off and look at that. That's just really fibrous material right there and that would take quite a spark. So what you want to do is just snap that piece off, put it into a baggie if you have it just to keep it dry and for a little bit more of tender, see this long grass this little straw this would go excellent for trying to make it a little bundle so you grab this you don't have to pull it where you get like the roots and off of it you just drag your fingers through it and that would get the dead stuff so you don't have to worry about getting any wet and that is all some good dry-ish stuff so when you have all that Plus the cattail, you can make a pretty good little tinder bundle or a bird's nest. So, the cattail fluff is an excellent flash tinder. It goes up like that when it's dry. Of course, you can have like a snowy day and it doesn't light up as fast, but once you get it lit, it just goes. So, this is an excellent little far shutter. And also, collecting a whole bunch of wood chips and wood dust and all that stuff is really great, but something much better, fatwood. If you don't know what fat, fatwood is, I'll put a video right here. Another excellent source of fire tender is fatwood. Oh yeah. I have a couple of videos on where to find fatwood and a couple of my gold mines that I've found. Dead fallen trees like this are an excellent place to try to find fatwood. Right here, this branch is gonna be my victim. Let's see if we can kick it off. Now, if you see that, that's starting to get rot. So, this right here won't be good fire starter. Take a look over here. Mainly these branches over here can help a lot. Ooh, how about this one? Take a look at this one. You can kind of see the resin accumulating around it. So, let me take our knife, chop into it. Look. If it's darkish, like right here, looks like some good fatwood. 
Looks like this outer part is not really good. Only the bottom right here. It's gonna be fatwood right there. I think fatwood is probably one of the best type of tenders and far starters out there. It's waterproof, it starts up really quick, you get some really good fatwood. And even if you get a little bit of fatwood, it could still sustain itself for a long time, even when it's windy. It's almost as good, or just as good, as a stormproof match. Now, if you don't really find much fatwood, you could still kind of use pine sap if you find it as well. Here's a little pine sap. This is pine sap. Crack it off. Add it to your fire, it will last much longer. Then, if you want to bring something out there, if you don't happen to have all that stuff on you or find it out there, bringing some self-made tender or buying stuff like the Coghlan's fire sticks right here. These are waterproof, I've tested it myself and just lit right up after shaking it off a bit and kind of drying it off of the hands or something like that. But they work pretty good. That's how I got my last fire in the cabin lit, or one of the last. Then, also, when you're dealing with a whole bunch of wood and stuff like that, get yourself some gloves. You won't regret it because you can get little cuts and nicks and just bash your finger on an accident if you just batoning through some wood or anything like that. So, having some gloves can help, especially if you're trying to deal with fire and coals and stuff like that. You don't want to burn your fingers or anything like that. Now, when you're trying to find some good tender, you want some dry tender. So, when you're looking for wood, look for this. When collecting firewood, you don't want anything that's been on the ground and soaking wet. So, having something like this can help and makes excellent little tinder. Even better, when you get it off of these, hear that awesome pop? That means it is dry and ready to be burned. Now you got your tinder, you gotta know what type of wood you should get. First, try to get lead pencil size sticks. This would add to the top of your tinder and provide much more fuel to start off the big start of it. Then you go off to a finger size and then wrist sized and then leg size type of wood. This would build up all of the fire necessities. Now you're going to need to know some fire lays. I'm going to represent some right here. Yeah! Alright, I got this all gathered up right here. Once you think you have enough, triple it. What this will do is prevent from all of your wood from going out at night. Because if you're trying to find wood at night, it is dangerous, you could trip, you could fall on top of something and just like not be able to move at all. So gather all the wood you can at sunlight. So I got the pencil size, finger size, wrist size right here, and then of course the leg size. Oh yeah, can't forget the tender. Probably one of the most important parts of it. So, the first fire lay is going to be, of course, the log cabin. It's probably the easiest one out there to make. It's literally a log cabin. Try to gather as much as a base as you can. I'm talking about base as well. If you're trying to find a good little base, you can find something like this, a flat log, or if you have it, some aluminum foil. This can work wonders, especially keeping it off the ground and preventing the wood from getting wet. But I'm going to keep using this. Making a little log cabin. And what this does is just really makes a hole right here and kind of lets the wood go on the outside. So when you get tender all going right here, it would 
expand all the thread of fire and stuff like that. So once you find a good enough amount right here, of course you could put in your tender right here. Woo, cattail. Don't want to do that. That's the one thing about cattail, it goes everywhere. I was just trying to air out the bed. I'm not gonna actually take it all out because you can see all this right here. Alright, and once you got like the tinder all in there, put the kindlin. Once you have the kindlin in there, you can start it up. And there you go. You have log cabin fire. Also, here's the reason why I love cattail. Watch this. And then when you, once you flip it back over, you can use it again. That is some awesome fire starter right there. Okay, the next fire lay I'm going to make is a teepee fire lay. What you want to do is gather as much tinder as you can. Of course, just kind of fluff it up and all that fun stuff. This is juniper bark and it is available in the desert and plus the uh, kind of a conifer type of forest. So once you got that pretty much fluffed up, kind of form it into a little nest or bundle. And then once you got all that set up, just start placing your kindling all around. Start with the small, of course. That's what you want to do for pretty much every type of fire. Start with small and go from there. Because if you don't, you would smother it. And putting too much tinder or extra stuff on top of it would prevent a lot of the air from going into the flame. And we all know that fire relies on air. So when you're trying to make a little teepee, always leave a space where you could reach tender. And this allows so you could actually spark the tender and actually just goes up. Kind of just want to surround it with as much kindling as you can besides that opening. Try to leave some spots open. For air and stuff like that. Don't make like a big giant fortress. And when you're trying to break some wood, you should wear gloves because you can get splinters and wood, just like pretty big chunks of wood into your hand. I've done it right here. Or it's already healed up. It's starting to look like a peepee, -pee, right? Just might get a fire. <laughs> with this one, you can build it up pretty big, especially with like the leg size type of wood. But I like to just start small. Like not even this big as well. You probably leave that out and be pretty well with just that right there. And that would start up really well, especially if you have fat wood and stuff like that. Or one of the good things to have carry on you is a good candle. Light this up. You could start out right there, you could put out in different areas and stuff like that and just last much longer and save a lot of resources other than just a big lighter or just some matches.
another good Farley that I found out, and I don't know if it actually has a name or not. I just kind of, not exactly thought of it, but I just saw it somewhere and didn't really know what it was. I'm just going to call it the A lay. What this does is you put two leg size logs right here into it upside down V form. And then take a lot of your different kindling and just set it up right on top of it. It's not exactly a, too much order how much you need on top of it. At least get a good portion of the sticks on there. Probably put some smaller sticks in front maybe. Maybe even put some smaller sticks inside. Stuff like that just to get it somewhat going. Yeah, put these in there and actually. And then what you want to do stuff your tender underneath all that right there. Make sure it has enough oxygen going through on there so it actually goes throughout the whole bundle. And if you know what this type of lay is, put it in the comments down below. I would like to know if it actually is a good fire lay and people have talked about it. But it's what I used the last time and I found out it works pretty well. Especially if you find something like this, you just add another log right here. It's already a good Y shape. If you find a good whole Y shape, that would even be better. So once you get that all fired up, all this kindling right here, maybe once when this starts going, you could put a log right on top of that and just let it go. Of course you want to be careful with it and make sure that None of it's getting out of control and going outside of the fire ring or anything like that. So, that's one of my, probably one of my favorite ones I've made. But I don't even know if it has a name yet. But, here are the three fire lays that I would use in a survival situation. Of course, there's others out there if you like to find them. Now that you got the fire lays done, you could finally light it up. Or if you're having troubles, get you some, some fat wood or any type of wood and start making feather sticks. Here's a little example of feather sticks. So I've got some pretty good fat wood right here with the Tom Chip wood knife. You'll most likely want a base, but all you're really doing is just sliding the knife down in a kind of a slicing type of motion and making wood curls. What this does is creates a lot of surface area and I love doing fat wood feather sticks not just because it lights up really fast it's because oh yeah and if they fall off don't worry as much could still throw that back into the tender and stuff like that. If you're not really good at feather sticks, you can still use fat wood and still get excellent results. All right, go to Nathan's 4071s. A little ferro rod. I'm gonna use package opener on my Leatherman Wingman oh yeah I'll put a link in the description down below to those if you want them and you should be able to just do that oh. that would definitely help starting a fire. And once you got this all pretty light lit up, you kind of want to move it around, kind of spread the flame so it touches other parts and gets bigger. And then you just add it.
to your wood bundle, fire bundle. And that would alone start up really well. And that's all literally what you do. Here's another reason why I love fatwood. Ain't that the best? Even these little things. I barely even touched it. Well, you could put out the smaller ones because it's not as much. But, can't beat that. Alright, so that concludes my What to Do When Lost in Wilderness Part 4 of Fire. I hope this is really informational. One thing I didn't really go over is the friction fire method, and I'm not really professional at that at all, so I'll leave that to the better people to explain it and how to deal with it when in wilderness. So I hope you use, use this stuff when lost in wilderness, and I want to thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.